Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's November 10th, 2016. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Donald Trump goes to the White House as reality finally sets in that a new sheriff is in town and he's about to drain the swamp. Then, the historic election of Donald Trump has shocked the world, leaving many commies, illegals, and members of the LGBT community in a total panic, and they take their anger to the streets, totally triggered by America's next president. Get the fuck out of here! I'm not gonna- dude, this is a public street! Racist? How is he racist? How? Yeah. Fucking Trump. Plus, liberal Hollywood is running scared, and they retreat to their safe spaces because they feel scared and threatened by our new commander in chief. <laughs> All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, folks, we are just two days removed from the election of Donald Trump to the office of United States president. And already big movements are happening. Big shifts are happening and big babies are out on the streets protesting. And today, Donald Trump went to his new office. He went to the White House. He spoke with Barack Obama. And this is going to be tough for me to do. But I am actually going to compliment Barack Obama here. First of all, I couldn't even imagine what this conversation was like considering the veracity between these two during the election cycle, the things that Obama has said about Trump, the things that Trump has said about Obama. It's almost as if Trump is now um, being you know, put into the realm of being a politician. Let's recall you know, Obama and Hillary fighting, fighting, fighting during their campaign. Now all of a sudden they love each other. Not saying Trump and Obama love each other, but they did meet today. Now, here were the powerful words that came from Barack Obama. I believe that it is important for all of us, regardless of party, regardless of political preference, to now come together, work together, and deal with the many challenges that we face. I want to emphasize to you, Mr. President-elect, that we now are going to want to do everything we can to help you succeed, because if you succeed, the country succeeds. Now, my question is, Will the protesters listen to their leader, Barack Obama? You know, they take anything Barack Obama says as gospel, but will they heed this call to work with Trump, to work with the Trump movement in order to make America better? Um, so far, not the case. They are out protesting like a bunch of arrested development babies. Now, I don't know. Now, again, these are powerful words from Barack Obama. Whether he means it or not, you be the judge, but that's what he said. Now, Donald Trump said, I quote, we discussed a lot of different situations, some wonderful and some difficulties. I very much looking forward to dealing with the president in the future, including counsel. I pray that Obama doesn't counsel Trump at all, but we'll see. This is, again, this is Trump being presidential. Then he says, Mr. President, it was a great honor meeting you, and I look forward to meeting with you many, many more times in the future. So again, this is Donald Trump being presidential, what you think of this visit, what you think of Barack Obama and Trump meeting and the things they said, um, we'll find out what kind of gravity or, or what type of honesty these comments had. But this was a major event. And again, if these people that take everything Barack Obama says as gospel who are out protesting, I mean, a lot of these people are protesting probably because of the things Obama said, demonizing Trump so much. Um, why don't they listen to Barack Obama and what he said there saying we need to work together to make this country great again. Shocking, shocking Barack Obama. You know what this is, though? I just realized this. This is just like we saw earlier today on the Alex Jones show. All of these politicians, folks, they're such frauds. They're such cowards. This is Obama realizing he's lost, realizing he's defeated, and just like any other shill politician, trying to cozy up to the people that are coming into power. I think that that's what this is more than anything. But hey, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, and I hope that the protesters heed his call to work together with the people in the Trump movement to make this country better, because that's all we want to do. I wish you weren't brainwashed protesting, and we'll get into this right now. Anti-Trump protests turn violent. Cops clash with 6,000 strong crowd in Oakland as activists block roads in L.A. amid nationwide demonstrations that saw Madonna and Cher join 7,000 in New York City. Oh, Madonna and Cher. Wait a second. Cher, Cher, you're supposed to be on the first plane out of town. 
You're not supposed to be protesting Donald Trump. You're out. You're moving. You're fleeing the country. Your house is on the market, Cher. What are you doing protesting? <laughs> is Cher that stupid? I mean, I guess that's the question. In Los Angeles, the disorganized protests of thousands saw fires on City Hall steps and Freeway 110 taken over. Wait a second. Wasn't it Trump that wasn't going to be able to hand over powerful uh, power peacefully? Wasn't it Obama telling us? Wasn't it Clinton telling us that it's a tradition in this country, the peaceful transition of power? But then it's the Clinton supporters that are out there violent. It's the Clinton supporters that are burning the American flag. Shocking. Shocking. Oh, and by the way, you know, they're protesting because he's anti-woman. Kellyanne Conway, first woman to ever successfully be a campaign manager to win the office of president. Okay, so there's your anti-woman protest buried in the ground. But it goes further. They want white people to die. They want white people to die and they're spraying it on the sides of buildings, ch chanting it in the streets because Trump is such a racist. Now, here's the thing um, for me. Oh, and also, Alex was talking about this a lot today. The woman that went on CNN basically saying that violence needs to happen because of this Trump election. And she said there will be casualties on both sides. Let me explain something to her and to anyone else who feels this way. I'm not a violent person. The Trump movement is not a violent movement, folks. We did this politically, okay? We didn't do it with protests. We didn't do it by burning flags. We did it politically. We did it with truth. We did it with honor. Now, everything on the other side was done in dishonor and dishonesty, but we still were victorious. But let me explain something. If you're sitting here trying to promote a civil war between Trump supporters and the Trump protesters or, or just any sort of a nature like that, huh, your side will be eliminated in 24 hours. It will not even be a fight. Do they even understand that? She's calling for violence. But again, let me explain. If you really promoted a civil war against the Trump movement, you and everybody on your side of this would be eradicated within 24 hours. Now, this is not what we want. I'm not sitting here up here saying that that's what we want. Trust me, that's not what we want. I would rather see these people uh, cleansed of their brainwashing and, and to join our movement and to actually want to build a better future uh, for this country, for their lineage. But it's interesting because, you know, we know that there's a depopulation plan in place. We know that they use the media to foment civil unrest. Maybe this is what they want. Maybe this is the agenda, folks. I mean, think about it. If they really want to promote this civil war, if they really want to push this civil war, we know what will happen. Now, Maybe this is the plan to eradicate the dumbest people in this country is by fomenting this civil war where the brainwashed masses try to take on the patriots. And then, you know, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears within 24 hours, the brainwashed masses are gone. It's not what I want, but they're the ones on the streets calling for violence. You see that? That's not us. Even if Clinton won, we weren't calling for violence, folks. But they're already... Uh, planning more protests, and we'll get to that in a minute. But look, you know, this is from Infowars.com. Shock video, black mob viciously beats white Trump voter. This isn't the first story. This isn't the first video. And, but Trump is racist. Trump supporters are racist. There's the video. This is disgusting. You know what, folks, let me tell you something. <laughs> I shouldn't even say, I'm not going to try to sound like Alex Jones here. It's just don't try that crap with me, okay? I'll just leave it at that. Now, here's the thing. Van Jones, who is a friend of mine, many of you have probably seen Van Jones and I in a uh, conversation on the streets. Van Jones, he can't handle this. Van Jones, he doesn't know what to do, you know, because he could, he, Trump is worse than a racist. I'm quoting Van Jones. He's worse than a racist. I mean, so, you know, in Van Jones' mind, somebody who's worse than a racist uh, worse than Hitler, I guess, just got elected president. That's Van Jones. He doesn't know what to do, folks. He doesn't know what to tell his kids. He doesn't know what to tell his audience. But here's what he is telling them. He's telling them that this was a white lash. So here's my question to Van Jones. Hey, Van, are you going to take responsibility for this crap? Are you going to take responsibility for these innocent white people getting savagely beaten by black people because they believe that racism is prevalent? They believe that these Trump voters are racist? 
Are you going to feel guilt for that, Van Jones? Are you going to take any responsibility for that mainstream media, Barack Obama? I doubt it. I doubt it. But I'll tell you what. We're going to hold you accountable. We know who you are. We know what you're doing. And Van Jones, we had a powerful discussion on the street. But I just got to say, my friend, you really need to think about what you're doing. Believe whatever you want about Trump. That's perfectly fine. But if you don't understand that you're fomenting racial violence in this country and that now what you're seeing on the streets uh, with white people getting beaten because they're Trump supporters, you just need to take a serious look in the mirror, Van Jones. And that goes to all the mainstream media out there. We know exactly what you did. We know exactly who's to blame. And I think it's sad that Van Jones gets up here, demonizes Donald Trump, and then foments racial violence in this country. That's, that's deplorable to me. Now, we've got Trump protests already happening by the thousands. But they're already planning on protesting the inauguration, folks. Protest at Trump's presidential inauguration. These are flyers that are being handed out at protests all across this country. Hmm, I wonder if George Soros has anything to do with this. And there's also Facebook groups. So you got buses taking people to D.C. to protest Trump's inauguration. You've got all of these Facebook groups sprouting up now. They're going to go protest Donald Trump's nomination. Not my president. Not my president. Well, he is your president. And no matter how much you protest, he's going to be the next president of the United States. And... The sad thing about it, folks, is the mindset of these people. Morning after Donald Trump's election, people are comparing it to 9-11. Now, they're doing this because of the numerics. So they're saying, oh, you know, 11-9, 9-11. But they're actually also comparing these, these events. Just, just yesterday in the LA Times, students who were protesting were being interviewed and they're saying, why are you protesting? Because this is devastating. Trump's nomination is devastating. 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 You don't have a clue about devastation. Okay? Let's be perfectly clear. So this is the nature of the Donald Trump protesters beating white people in the street because they're racist, comparing the election of Trump to devastation and 9-11. Truly pathetic. And I'll tell you what, your time is done. This is it for you. Enjoy your little protest, okay? Enjoy your little protest. Have a little pizza and, and, and soda party and, and do whatever you want to do. This is it for you, okay? You're done. You're done. So enjoy it while it lasts. Hollywood studios are in a daze. A daze. Many of us will be scared and threatened. Oh, my gosh, folks. A strange silence has descended on Hollywood Wednesday. As stunned studio executives, agents, and producers went through the motions as they tried to process Hillary Clinton's surprise loss to Donald Trump. It's so surprising. What about the polls? I saw the polls. Hillary was winning. I'm shocked. What is going on here? And then Jeremy Zimmer sends out this memo. Jeremy Zimmer is a talent agent, a CEO of a talent agency. Many of us will be scared and threatened, and we can give comfort some of us will be happy because our voice was heard, but either way, it's a challenging moment, so let's be extra sensitive. We need to be extra sensitive with these snowflakes that can't handle Donald Trump, folks. Well, here's an idea. Cal Exit. Hollywood, you're in California. Maybe you can join the Cal Exit. California wants to succeed from U.S. over Trump election. <laughs> Tell you what, go ahead and succeed. You have more debt than any other state in this country. And then we'll take it one further. You can have Hillary Clinton as your president. So that'll be nice for you. Go ahead. And then maybe we'll build a wall. Maybe we'll build a wall on the California border, too. How do you like that? You won't be able to afford it. You can't afford anything. You're so much in debt, California. But I will say this. People were asking me how, about, how I feel about the Electoral College. Um, seeing the fact that California could basically, with the popular vote, determine the presidential election, I'm going to have to say that I like the Electoral College. I don't want those brain-dead liberals in California deciding who's president. The one scenario, now this is interesting, folks. Maybe there is some hope for people like Sarah Silverman and Amy Schumer. They were, at, they were looking for hope. I mean, they have no hope because Trump won. The one scenario that could still get Hillary Clinton into the White House 
Now, of course, this would be the Electoral College voters not voting with the decision of the actual voters. This is called the Faithless Elector. And, of course, the whole entire map is red, folks. Every county uh, except the inner cities and the uh, sanctuary cities is red. Those are the only cities that are blue. Yeah, there you go. There's the map right there. So for them to do that would be, I mean, such treason against the American public, it would be unbelievable. But hey, maybe that's some hope for your uh, for your movement, Sarah Silverman, whatever that is. Or Bernie Sanders actually suggested today he might be considering running for president in 2020. So maybe Bernie Sanders comes back in. That would actually be interesting, even though he's a total shill. But of course, I guess that's why they would want him in. Now, James Comey faces a complicated path under Trump administration. Does he try to serve out the remaining seven years of his term under president who has publicly questioned the FBI's integrity? Well, yeah, they can't even indict a known criminal. Or does he stay on, a, uh, on as a safeguard against executive power and a guide for a novice president on complex security matters? Or I'll go ahead and throw another one out there for you, Yahoo, since you can't wrap your mind around it. Or he's fired. You fired, James Comey. Now, I thought that James Comey reopening this investigation to Clinton might mean that he has a spine left. He realized Trump was going to win, and he wanted to have a job in a Trump administration. But I'm not sure if that's the case. But I can't even believe Yahoo. Does James Comey stay in office in order to be a safeguard against Trump's executive power? How about all the executive orders from Barack Obama? Was James Comey doing anything about that? No. And the FBI is a failed agency. Again, they can't indict Hillary Clinton, who's already being indicted by the public. We have the WikiLeaks. We have all the information, folks. So we'll see what happens with James Comey. But two days into the Trump election, and we're already seeing the aftermath. Well, we have video of NBC predicting a race war, telling Americans you have absolutely no hope. They're claiming that Trump is welcomed only by despotic leaders, despite the fact that we saw Justin Trudeau just extend a hand of friendship, saying, let's renegotiate the terms of NAFTA. Uh, we've seen uh, the Mexican people. There was an article yesterday talking about how Mexico is welcoming Donald Trump to the presidency. They're anxious to work with him. And leaders extending the hand of friendship around the world. Despite those facts, NBC is predicting that Americans have no hope, and he's only welcomed by despots. That was the tagline. And and this broadcast, it took place on Wednesday night. They appear to predict a full-on race war. That's what they're trying to do in this country. They want to spark a race war. Uh, they couldn't do it successfully before the election. They're clearly angry about that. And in this broadcast, they're predicting a race war in America. Now that Donald Trump is president, they're blaming the race war on Trump, the gall of them. Now, we have this anchor, uh, Lester Holt. And if you recall, he, he was the moderator in the second debate, probably the most biased moderator in U.S. history, frankly. He couldn't successfully hand the election to Hillary Clinton. You failed, sir. So now he's going on the attack and insinuating that uh, in this report, uh, he's using the phrase called white lash. And specifically, he's referencing uh, that term. It was originally done by Van Jones, who was an Obama advisor, and no surprise there, uh, an anchor at the Clinton News Network now. So um, he said that while Donald Trump's many supporters are basking in, in his victory, Many woke up uh, to the morning after the election feeling disillusioned by the headlines. And clearly, and, and at this point, uh, Lester Holt is moaning this. Time and time again, critics accuse Trump of running a campaign with undercurrents of racism. And those concerns persist now. Well, I've got news for you. They don't persist now. We have collected pockets. And we have successfully uncovered here on InfoWars how the Black Lives Matter movement, which is a Soros-funded project, they are often paid protesters, uh, paid to agitate. And the mainstream media has done an incredible job. My hats are off. My hats off to you, all of you that have successfully uh, lied to the American people, and you've sparked such incredible, divisive uh, feelings and fear among people. We have an astonishing clip, of course, coming out of CNN uh, from a lady. Now she was a protester in one of these protest movements yesterday. She actually claims that Trump supporters need to die. Take a look at this. Lily, Lily, your sign tonight says... Um, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. If, if we don't fight, who's going to fight for us? People had to die for freedom where we're at today.
we can't just do rallies. We have to fight back. There will be casualties on both sides. There will be because people have to die to make a change in this yeah. world. But Trump, enough with your racism. Stop splitting families. Let, don't split my family. And you're fearful that you're going to lose friends and relatives to deport? Oh, yeah. A lot. Friends, family, even all races. Not just my Hispanic culture, but the rest of the races. Don't take away our rights. You know, you impeach Donald Trump. That's what he needs to get. Yeah. He's impeached. All right, Paul. Uh, Paul, well, as you can hear, Paul, Don, that's some much. of the sentiments here. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Paul. No one should be advocating for You know, I'm speechless. I think I just heard her call for people to die. This woman who is protesting so violently is calling for violence and death of fellow Americans because, quote, that's what it takes. Now, this massive anti-Donald Trump protest, it was, it was done in California a day after the election. CNN caught this video. And, of course, we hear Don Lemon say, oh, we're not advocating violence. But then they go ahead and, and race bait uh, to every single day on that network. It is a different story about race baiting. And uh, going back to Lester Holt for a moment and this fear-mongering race report that he came up with, he cites, we've got a, a situation where a reporter named Ron Allen, he was in front of the African American Museum in Washington, D.C. And um, he goes on to say, and this is a part of this article that Steve Watson put together. It's up on our website. Um, this is what Ron Allen, who's a reporter, had to say. He said, outside the nation's African American History Museum, there's deep worry about President-elect Donald Trump's victory and the huge turnout by rural working class white voters. Uh, the reporter then suggests that Trump was able to capture the White House only because of these disgruntled, idiot white Americans that are inherently racist and just simply afraid of diversity. Then he goes on to say this. They see what's been called white lash, rallied by a candidate who promised to ban Muslims, wall out Mexicans, and challenge the very legitimacy of the nation's first black president. This election seems more like an eviction. And he talks about how white America, the disgruntled, you know, it plays hand in hand with what uh, Barack Obama said about white Americans when he was campaigning. It wasn't a successful enough uh, narrative not to, uh, you know, to, to deny him the presidency. But he said, you know, those basically those ignorant Americans clinging to their guns and religion. Well, if my memory serves me correctly, the only people that we've seen clinging to guns and religion or swords and religion are radical Muslims in this day and age. So uh, this uh, Ron Allen, the fear mongering race report continues and it's largely responsible for for fueling the flames in this country where we're seeing these incredible acts of violence and protest. We've covered the ones in, in Portland, Oregon, where we saw a mob of 100 cross a highway. One man was actually hit in that protest. Uh, coming out of Oakland, we saw rioting. We saw an American flag burn in the Portland incident. Uh, one Trump's uh, supporting party was underway in San Francisco, and we saw violent acts there. And uh, Paul Joseph Watson, the brother of Steve, he's coined a, a sister article, if you will, that talks about uh, the violence that's continuing in America. And he actually put a video up, and this black mob is seen viciously beating a white Trump voter. And uh, you can hear one of them say, you voted for Trump, you're going to pay for that SHIT. Now, Paul points out in this in this video clip, and it's, it's really violent, it's very shocking. This is coming outside of Chicago. It's a mob of black young men viciously beating an older white man because he voted for Donald Trump. They're dragging him through the streets as he hangs out of the back of the car. The clip, now there are two separate clips of this, it shows them repeatedly screaming, you voted for Donald Trump, as they assault him from every single angle. They steal his belongings, they take his car. Uh, another woman who is on looking, she's shouting, beat his a double ass. And then another man is heard uh, laughing on this tape, don't vote for Trump. We have two uh, videos of this incident. Uh, one is being called, um, it was dubbed and put up to the F Donald Trump song. It's a phrase now that's being chanted in these protests across the country. And this poor man, you can actually see him. His hand is stuck in the window. They actually drive off with his car, if you can believe that. And uh, the scene is is absolutely insane. They're, of course, accusing him of being linked to the, quote, racist candidate. When overwhelming, overwhelming, the, the American population they spoke, we don't even actually believe the, the, the real number that was reported. We think that it was greater for Donald Trump, just from our experience of being on the ground covering uh, Trump rallies and Trump movements. 
Independence. And we know that uh, he had massive turnout. Owen and I were on the desk um, in real time watching the election unfold. And, and I have to tell you, the map was so overwhelmingly red everywhere. It was unbelievable. And this crazy narrative that the mainstream media is putting out there for very, uh, very susceptible minds is that Donald Trump is a racist. And I'm here to tell you, we've, d we've done the research, we've been on the ground. I know that this man has a heart for America and for the American people, all American people of every race, color, and creed. And that is very, very um, noticeable every time he speaks. And these crazy mainstream media hacks, they have done a bang up job, let me tell you, of inciting violence and race baiting with, with these white lash comments uh, and then calling white America, you know, talking about the resentment of white America, which is the only reason why Trump was elected in the first place. That's the insinuation of Ron Allen. That's the insinuation of Lester Holt and the audacity of him, the honor to have to have moderated a presidential debate and then to come back and his true colors come out after the election. It turns out they lost. They're very bitter about losing this election and her camp, they're gonna they're gonna continue to fear monger, to race bait, to misreport the facts, to lie to the American people and incite as much violence as they can. Now, the most troubling aspect of this report for me, and it'll continue to be throughout the day, is the woman calling for death on CNN's channel, uh, death, uh, you know, casualties on both sides is what she's calling for. And then she tells Trump, enough with your racism. Trump, enough with your racism. That's what she says when, lady, are you joking me? Who's the racist here? Do you, do you hear Trump calling for the death of innocent people? Absolutely not. So just bringing you uh, the ability to see through these lies. We know that we have a very smart audience. You guys are on this. And uh, make sure you follow these stories. They're up on our website, Infowars.com. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. Because I want to move to Spain. I really, really want to move to Spain right now. Rob Dew with Infowars.com, and I would like to be the first to thank white America for ruining the country. Although I'm not the first. In fact, Van Jones went out on election night and got on CNN and said, it's white lash. And that's the reason it happened, because white people were so bad and evil and mad that they wanted to send a message that a woman couldn't be president. We've talked about race. I mean, we've talked about everything but race tonight. We've talked about income. We've talked about class. We've talked about region. We haven't talked about race. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And then last night we had Samantha Bee saying white people ruined America. That's right, here's the clip. People will be looking for someone to blame the pollsters, the strident feminists, the Democratic Party, a vengeful God. But once you dust for fingerprints, it's pretty clear who ruined America. White people. She then joked and said, oh, I guess ruining Brooklyn was a dry run. That's right, because somebody who builds up properties and hires people to build them and maintain them is ruining America and ruining jobs, just like he did in D.C. with the new post office. In fact, the government gave him the bid and he brought it in under budget and under time. That's terrible. That's the wrong thing to do, Donald. You're doing a horrible disservice to our country. But wait, we got more comedians. Here's Chelsea Handler literally breaking down in tears that Hillary Clinton didn't win. And I think, I guess the message that I want to like spread out to other women is, is exactly what you're saying is not to give up. Sorry, I hate crying on camera, but <laughs> is not to give up because this is so important. And it's, it's easy to say, throw in the towel on that we're going to leave or I'm going to move to Spain because I want to move to Spain. I really, really want to move to Spain right now. And I'm going to get serious here in a second, but let me show you one more clip. Here's Seth Meyers wiping away the tears that his mother might not get to see the first woman president. And whoever you are, I hope I live to see your inauguration. And I hope my mom does too. Uh, she was really excited yesterday. And um, I was really sad for her. And then he went on to say, well, the first woman president could still be out there watching this. And then you still get to be the first woman president. Look, people, it's not even the point that Hillary Clinton would have been or not have been the first woman president. She's an evil bitch. That's the bottom line. In fact, one of her first jobs as a public defender was defending a child rapist. 
And she used tactics on this little girl who we had just behind me in the studio, Kathy Shelton, who was 12 years old when she was pulled off her bike and gang raped. How's that for feminism? Okay. And Hillary went on to take evidence and move it across state lines. She mishandled evidence in this case. She actually took this little girl, brought her up on the stand and made her cry. And she was using tactics now that are illegal under rape shield laws. Does that sound like a person that needs to be president? They jerked me off my bicycle. They put me in the truck and they were beating me they, and, and then they raped me. And he was saying he knew I liked it, except in a more terribly manner than that. I um, was left out on the ground, barely conscious. Uh, some, sometimes at one time I was unconscious. Hmm. It's pretty funny, though, watching people like Colbert on the Colbert Report having his election night special when they knew Hillary was going to win. They knew without a shadow of a doubt because she had sewn it up in the polls and that they had it was just nothing but a little bit of racist white people that were going to vote for Trump. And then watching them just almost cry on TV as they saw the results coming in. It's even funnier watching the Young Turks as a whole panel watching the utter disdain on their faces because they lost. Get over it. Let's move on. Now, let's not keep encouraging people by going, it's only racist doing it because I'm not a racist and I voted for Donald Trump, period. And there's plenty of other people that voted for him that aren't racist either. And we don't have a desire to hate women and ruin this country with misogyny or xenophobia. All we want to do is protect the border, have fair elections, and have a decent economy where everybody has a chance to succeed. And if you don't want that for people, if you think you have to run around and take care of everybody, then you're the real racist out there. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. Good line for a comedy show, eh? No, I, I'm not sure if it's a comedy show at this point. No. <laughs>
obviously it's it's a very very big uh, pro Hillary anti anti Trump rally. Earlier you mentioned the people with masks. Do you know who those people are? Uh, from what I can tell, they're wearing kefias, which uh, yeah. generally come from the Middle East. There are a lot of Palestinian uh, supporters wear them because that's like one of their. It's actually. Their what if I told you it's the local Communist Party? Oh, I knew. I knew okay. it was because right. uh, I mean the the pro Palestinian group here on campus is very very communist. I know I know a few people from classes that are in, involved with it. I think we can come together now. Donald Trump said, "Make America great again." I think we can do that, and this is this is going to take involve everyone across the entire political spectrum, left, right, communist, um, conservative. Everyone is going to have to work together to make this country great again. In fact, the majority of them actually believe they're going to be immediately deported. Trump, he's got to go. Hey, hey, oh, oh. What is Trump have to go? He does not represent this country. He, his racist, xenophobic, and completely utter. Where are you from, my friend? I am from Houston. Okay, where are you raised here? Great. I am Dude. a Muslim American. You're an American. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. I am a Muslim American. Right. I do not deserve to be thrown out of this country. What, what about? Well, of course you don't. Exactly. Of course you don't. Uh, freedom of religion. Yes, sir. Um, I do not believe Trump respects that. He right, believes okay. all of my kind are terrorists, are radical Islamists, when very few of us are. What's the first thing that comes to mind? He's going to deport illegal immigrants who will help this country and white supremacy. The local communist party that I spoke to here in Austin wouldn't speak back because they don't believe in free speech and frankly they're cowards. This entire march was a march of cowardice. But as Obama, your leader, has explained to you, you must accept this peaceful transfer of power and accept the resurrection of the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights of which this country was founded on. John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, folks, the protests for Donald Trump were ongoing for the last year and a half to try to keep him out of office. They failed. But the losers are continuing to go back to their failed techniques and they're still protesting Donald Trump. And believe it or not, it's actually gotten worse and more shocking. Here's some of the highlights of what we've seen so far. Get the f out of here, dude. I'm not gonna, dude, this is a public street. Piece of racist. How is he racist? How? Yeah. Fing Trump. I'm not a fascist. Why, why can't we have an open dialogue? I don't talk to fascists. Why not? I don't talk to fascists. I'll talk to you, whatever you are. I don't talk to fascists. <laughs> all right. I'm a fascist, apparently. This guy doesn't know me at all. Oh, my God. I didn't see you. Look at this guy. This guy just assaulted Pussy me. Back. Look at this guy. Pussy back. Pussy back. Hey, this guy, Joe Biggs. This guy over here just assaulted me. Look at this dude. Oh. The one, no, no, not you. Not you. Over here. Look. Right here, with his face covered, because he's a coward. How are you hitting people? He's a coward. You're 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 a coward. Look at that. Yeah, they're so peaceful. 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 
That's how you get when you're on communist. They're a bunch of cowardly f***ing scumbags. I bet the guy that kicked Josh in the back, the guy that was wearing the mask, was probably the same guy that accused Josh of being a coward. That's the kind of uh, projection that these liberals do, right? Yeah, 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 bet, it was. Yeah, yeah, okay, it was, yeah. Yeah, you guys going down there in this crowd of maniacs who are screaming and kicking people in the back and you're wearing a Trump shirt, that's anything but a coward. But a coward is somebody that kicks someone in the back. But that's what we see with these people. They project their faults on other people just like Hillary Clinton did. Right. They're racist, and so they call you a racist because all they see is skin color. It's America, dude. Trump's doing? Do you see what he supports? Like, I, I don't even want to bother with y'all. No, no, I honestly, joke. I, 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 joke, hey, I honestly want to know. I honestly want to know. Get the out of here, dude. I'm you're not getting, dude, this, words, this is a public street. This is a, this is a public street, man. This is, a, this is your problem, is that you don't want to talk to anyone. You just no assume point. everyone's no a, a, I'm not a racist. You, That's fucked up. You, I'm not racist. you got Trump in the office. I got Trump in the office. you vote for Trump? I'm not here to talk about who voted for who. All I did was ask you why this you're about, here. This is about the presidency. Get the f out of here if you don't. He's already president. You're not going to change it. I'm not, I'm not trying to change it. You're not going to change it. I know I'm not. He's the president. Like, no shit. Fucking dumbass. So, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? We're protesting the fact that he got fing elected. Okay. All right. Like, no shit. So, there you go, folks. Those are the people that want to control this country's destiny and be in charge of our future. No thanks. In fact, if you guys wanted to go ahead and move out of this country with Amy Schumer and the like, be my guest. I'll even buy your plane ticket. Thanks so much for everybody who tuned in to the news tonight. Please go to InfoWarsStore.com. Support this broadcast. We'll be back tomorrow night. What a week it was for InfoWars. We were victorious. You were victorious. InfoWars.com.